good, y'all? It's your boy Marcus Harvey, the Barber Star, and I'm about to show you guys how to get the fresh beard right. Step one, comb your client's beard out. Your beard strength grows from right in here. In order to get this beard high where we need it to be, we're actually gonna have to blend in this top beard to kind of come closer to the skin. So we can do that easily with some shears. If you don't want to take out too much because a lot of people want to keep their beard's length, correct? Home it out. And at an angle, take a little of that weight out. Taking that weight out right there so that when you put that line on, it's kind of flush and it's actually integrating some of the hair that's, new, that's newly growing, the new growth. I love freehanding because you can have a lot more control. You can see how this is kind of like blending into the cheek now. You sleep on this side of your beard? Yeah. How'd I know that? Cause I've been doing this for a long time, baby. Come on, baby. Typically what happens while you're asleep, you get a lot of friction. A lot of breakage starts happening. I always start on the side that has that needs the most work. I call this sculpting. Look at that beard, that thing crispy. All right, so let's go ahead and get it lined up. So we have the V2 blade, the bevel trimmer right here. This thing has four hours of lineup power. I typically use this, this type of clipper with um, the high cheeks. And then it's a T-line, T-blade, baby. That hammerhead looking thing. Boy, look at this. For the back part of your, your beard, a lot of coverage. Let's get to it. I always like to start with the back part of the beard. I like to also move a lot of that, that uh, hair to the back of the beard so that it's evenly distributed. And I can see exactly where I'm gonna line up. Now with this motor being the most powerful motor in a trimmer, you wanna always be careful because we also have the dopest blade in the game. So you wanna always ask the comfort of your clients. You can actually take off the blade and adjust the actual closeness of the blade. So if he had that paper mache skin, you know them cats with the paper mache skin, mm -hmm. anytime you touch them, it just whelps up. I can bring that thing back. Get that thing like he's like he got that newborn skin. If I wanted to change it up. And it still has the same type of cutting power without being afraid that I'm gonna actually bite the skin. Now y'all gonna be like, why Marcus always sticking out his tongue when he cut hair? Cause I feel like Jordan, baby, when I got these in my hand. All right, so typically when I go against it, I've established a a line. Now I typically just make a indention just so that when I go back with the razor, with the bevel razor, it makes everything smooth. I'm still gonna go behind and use my razor just to establish that line a little bit more. All right, now that I've done that back ear, I'm gonna use the V2 blade for the top. Now like he said, initially he wants to keep his beard lined up, meaning that we're gonna have it pretty much right there. Now as you can see, there is not a lot of hair right here, so we're almost gonna create an actual Imaginary line, slight established line. Now typically when you're doing a beard repair, like I said, you wanna blend that hair to where it kind of smoothly comes in because you're not cutting it just for this haircut, you're cutting it for the next haircut that's gonna lead into the high beard. Now you always wanna use some, the, the bevel priming oil before you use a razor just because one, it adds more luxury to your client's haircut and then two, it prepares the skin. It creates a layer between the skin and the blade so that you don't get a lot of irritation. Now that I put the priming oil on, I'm gonna let that kinda seep in for a second as I prepare bevel shaving foam brush. All right. Now I don't necessarily wanna spread the lather into his beard cause I wanna kinda maintain the shape. So I'm just gonna kinda right above the line, right where, every, where the uh, blade will be hitting. And then you get a hot towel. Okay, maybe not that hot. Too hot, bro? I'm good. And I know a lot of you barbers want like a, an ash line. So after his, his skin starts drying, it's gonna give you that nice crispy ash line that you're looking for too. Brand new blade, every client gets one. When I'm doing a beard, I tell my client to blow a bubble like you're playing a trombone. That tightens the skin so that I don't have to put too much pressure on the stroke, and I still also stretch the skin. You use your thumb right here and pull the skin back like that so that you don't get any buckling. 
because this is a very sensitive area also. Whenever you're doing the bottom neck, you always want to kind of like have them lean their head back and come from this direction. This is going to be your starting point and you want everything to match from here and then in there. It's the only thing that I'm taking off, as you can see. The other good thing about the bevel trimmer is the actual weight of the battery helps and assists you by keeping your line straight. Always pull the skin down and go against the grain. Because with the trimmer, it's not going as close as the razor. So when you're doing it with the trimmer, you can go against the grain to get those little small hairs. Versus when you're using it with the razor, we're not telling you to do that. The power that this bevel trimmer has, I can also kind of shape and form with the clipper. An actual organic haircut, no preservatives. Mustache, I start at the bottom part of the lip also. I'm gonna use a V2 for the top of the mustache. Ask my client to bend his lip in. Bend your lip in, perfect. And I like to kinda also go into the beard like that so I can get all the flyaways. But you don't want the flyaway here to go over your lineup. Going inside the mouth. Most people with beards, when they're growing their beard, they have this either this little missing piece. So you can either keep it that high with the, with the false line or you can cut into the beard with the sharpness of it. Would you like to try that too? Yes, sir. Cool, cool, let's get that. And what I do is I establish the line from right here and I go up because I don't want to take too much hair from in here away and make his, you know, his beard skinny. So I want to kind of keep it still full, but just at a sharper angle. Trombone bubble. If I wanted to get it sharp, I can do what I feel like, y'all. Look, that thing looks, boy, you better do your homework. You can do homework off that beard right there, brother. You make sure that everything's on point. As you can see, we did a very organic hairline or on the beard. Now that we've gotten it this clean, we've done a lot of stuff on his skin. We wanna make sure that we also hit them with the restoring bomb. Typically when you use the restoring bomb, you only wanna use maybe a dime size worth of it. You don't need to use a lot. Oh my goodness, smell this. It's, it's from Aquanda. Oh, am I not gonna do it? Wait, don't wanna, wait, wait. Put it right on the top of your beard. No burn, bruh. Ta-da. I'm Marcus Harvey. This has been the Bevel Masterclass. You learn from your boy, the Barber Star. Be a master. That's how you bevel up.